Welcome back to another episode of A Traveling Perspective. Today, we're checking out the sights and sounds of Rome and Venice, while also stopping by Vatican City. This trip is extra special as I'm traveling with my beautiful mother, Julie, for her second time abroad and first to Europe. So, let's get traveling. To kick off our trip, we paid a visit to a figure that has dominated Rome for thousands of years, the Pope. On Sundays at noon, you can enter St. Peter's Square for Angelus, a short 20-minute message and prayer from the Pope as he stands at his balcony high above the square. If he is in town, Angelus is a great way to catch a glimpse of the Pope from the iconic St. Peter's Square and an experience I would highly recommend. <laughs> So as you can tell with the bells behind us, Angelus with Pope Francis just wrapped up and uh, it's about 12.15 here in Vatican City in St. Peter's Square. Mom, what'd you think? It's a great experience, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, neither of us are, are Catholic, but it's really cool. I think the best part of being here for something like this is seeing everyone gather uh, to hear the Pope's words and uh, a lot of flags from different countries. People. You know, traveling to Vatican City to see the leader of their church and uh, all the pomp and circumstance that comes with the Pope and uh, really cool to see it firsthand for sure. After Angelus wrapped up, we decided to try out the public transportation and jump on the Orange Line train south from Ottaviano to Colli Albani to meet up with Europe's first superhighway, the Appian Way. Mom, what's your favorite thing about the Appian Way? I just like that you can fill your water bottles up. Get fresh, clean water. Yeah, that is really cool, Mom. I didn't tell you to say that, did I? <laughs> Not nope. at all. <laughs> All right, so we're getting to the end of the Appian Way. So if you're unfamiliar, the Appian Way was actually first started in 312 BC uh, during the earlier parts of the Roman Republic. Um, not this specific part, but yeah, 312 BC uh, are the origins of this road and it has hosted a whole lot of history. So really important battles um, during uh, Spartacus's rebellion, the slave rebellion. Um, it's hosted battles during World War II between the Allied and the Axis forces. And during the 1960 Rome Olympics, part of the marathon route was actually run on the Appian Way as well. So we caught up with the Appian Way in the middle of um, the park and we walked it now for probably about an hour and a half. What do you think? Oh, I'm sure at least. Hour and a half getting our steps in and it's just so beautifully done. You know the saying, all roads lead to Rome, and that is certainly true about the Appian Way, and uh, we are uh, happy to have seen it for ourselves. Anything else to say? I think you said it all. You're the historian. <laughs> oh, far from it, but fun to read about this place for so long and uh, and see it for ourselves here in Rome. The next day we dove headfirst into ancient Rome, starting with the iconic Roman Colosseum. The Colosseum was completed in 80 AD and it was the largest amphitheater built in the ancient world and actually still holds that title in the modern world today as well. At its peak, the Colosseum could hold up to 80,000 spectators for gladiatorial contests and dramas depicting Roman history. As you make your way up the stairs to the second level, you're treated to brilliant illustrations depicting what the Colosseum looked like and how it operated in its glory days at the height of ancient Rome. Here you can see how various animals were moved throughout the stadium to prepare them for battle with slaves turned gladiators. Walking each level of the Colosseum truly does transport you back in time 2,000 years, and you can feel the fear those going to battle must have had and the excitement and bloodlust of the crowd all while being thankful we don't celebrate such pointless violence anymore. 
In its 400 years of use, it is estimated that 400,000 humans and 1 million animals died within the Colosseum's walls. Next up on our guided tour was the Roman Forum. The Forum truly was the center of Roman life, as in addition to being the location of numerous government buildings, it hosted triumphal processions after war, elections, criminal trials, and was the center of commerce in Rome. Structures in this part of the city date back to the 8th century BC. It's also great to see the ongoing work to preserve this historic site as you walk through it. One of the highlights of walking through the Forum is the Temple of Julius Caesar. Though not much remains of the temple today, it's remarkable to witness the spot where Caesar was buried and his will was read aloud by Mark Antony to the citizens of Rome. This temple was built posthumously by Caesar's adopted son Octavian, soon to become Rome's first emperor as Caesar Augustus after Caesar was declared a god by the Roman Senate. After our long day spent in ancient Rome concluded with a quick trip up the Palatine Hill to see the copy of the famed equestrian statue of Stoic philosopher and Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, it was finally time for a Roman lunch. Mom, what do you think of your authentic Italian pasta? Your authentic Italian rigatoni? Molto bene? Molto bene. Nice spot for a donut, right? You gotta try it when you hear the pastries. Yeah, there you go. Why don't you have your first bite? The next day it was back to the Vatican for a tour of St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican Museum, and the Sistine Chapel. The world's largest church, St. Peter's Basilica was designed by some of the finest artists of the Renaissance era in Bramante, Michelangelo, and Bernini, among others. The sheer size and intricate detail of this church is breathtaking and will leave you staring mouth agape for hours if you let it. The walk through the Vatican Museum is filled with impossibly beautiful frescoed ceilings and tapestries depicting religious scenes as well as other events such as the assassination of Julius Caesar. The payoff of this walk is Michelangelo's masterpiece in the Sistine Chapel, the Pope's personal chapel. Photos aren't allowed, but Mom and I took the cheekiest of videos before we left. On Wednesday, we decided to leave Rome for just a bit to travel an hour east to the town of Tivoli. Tivoli is home to both Hadrian's Villa, the 1900-year-old vacation home of the Roman Emperor, as well as Villa di Essi, the 500-year-old vacation home of a cardinal of the church. How are you liking uh, Hadrian's Villa? Uh, it's very unique. It's yeah. amazing. Back what is it, 1900 years 1900 that years. they would even be able to make anything like this. Yeah. Pretty elaborate, really. Especially that statue with a really nice marble butt. Okay, mom wouldn't be my guinea pig and touch the butt, so I'll touch the butt. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> the tabert, tabertine. Yeah, that's the highlight of my trip so far. Is it? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. That's okay. We all we all find our delights in different things, you know. Yeah, right. While traveling, that's okay. Just kidding. <laughs> all right, mom. What do you think of our lunch view? Pretty fantastic. Like the pizza. Very. We skipped the uh, lunch that went along with the tour and just came out and grabbed some pizza at a little side street restaurant, and then now we've got the view looking down on uh, Tivoli, and um, pretty nice. Mom's enjoying her mozzarella pizza. <laughs> and then, I don't even remember what else we got, but this is the view.
All right, Mom, what surprises you about this uh, vending machine? That they, have a, <laughs> that they have a big, wide selection of beers. Beers, yeah. Yes. Two euro thirty for the Corona. You got a, a dollar of the Italian Peroni. <laughs> and uh, Heineken's two euro. Which one are you going for? I already got my beverage of choice. Oh, uh, what? You're not going to get a beer? Villa Diesti is truly a summer home fit for a king or pope or anyone really. This property features 51 fountains, 398 decorative spouts, 364 water jets, 64 waterfalls, and 220 basins. The most remarkable thing about this is that all of these work solely with the force of gravity. There are no pumps of any kind involved. The grandest sight has to be this, the Fountain of Neptune, but our most enjoyable was certainly the Fountain of the Organ, producing the finest Baroque beats from the era. Listen for yourself. One of the many wonderful things about Rome is that the work of some of civilization's greatest artists are free and very accessible. For instance, after arriving back in Rome from Tivoli, a quick stop at the church of San Pietro in Vincoli allowed us front row seats to Michelangelo's sculpture of Moses. And a quick 20 minute walk from there found us in front of the Pantheon, the best preserved of all ancient Roman buildings, and another site free to enter. Originally a Roman temple when built by our friend Hadrian in 126 AD, the Pantheon has been a Catholic church for the last 1400 years. After a quick one hour flight northeast and some sleep on that flight for one of us, we touched down in Venice and immediately made our way to our water taxi. The water taxis from Marco Polo Airport into Venice are a relaxing and enjoyable way to begin your trip to this gorgeous lagoon. Tickets are just 15 euro one way and include a trip down Venice's Broadway, the Grand Canal. about to try her first Aperol Spritz and uh, you excited about it? Malta Bane. Malta Bane. What does it taste like? It's kind of fruity, citrusy. Fruity? Like wine? Wine, yeah. That's good. Good. And a beautiful day. After our first Venetian meal, we wrapped up our first day in Venice by lazily walking through the city's maze of bridges over canals as well as enjoying the waterfront and St. Mark's Basilica. Portions of St. Mark's date back 1200 years, but most of the church is much more modern. With a clear Byzantine Roman influence, it was striking to me how similar the inside looked to the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. The facade of the building is just as easy to look at, and St. Mark's Square, which the Basilica faces, is a great place to just sit and people watch. When staying in Venice, I highly recommend opting for an Airbnb overlooking the canal rather than a hotel. From what I saw, they seem more cost effective and it's not bad having canal views to wake up to with gondoliers going by your window in the morning. Can't beat your breakfast in St. Mark's Square, that's for sure. Cafe Americano and whatever this delicious cream and chocolate filled thing is. Pretty good, huh? Venice, half of the fun of this place is just being a super tourist and taking photos on bridges and videos of the beautiful wood grain boats passing beneath you. 
there's not a bad spot to take a photo in all of Venice and uh, mom and I took advantage of all of the dining options along the canal as well. However, if anyone can teach us how to get the damn meat out of a lobster, then please comment below. Keeping with the super tours theme, mom and I hopped into a gondola for a 30 minute tour of the canals. Although touristy, taking a gondola ride is a must in Venice and offers a fun vantage point of the streets you've likely already walked. Additionally, the detail of the gondolas and the skill of the gondoliers is fun to witness as well. Your first gondola ride, what do you think? <laughs> as long as we stay dry, right? <laughs> a fun fact mom picked up that I missed was that gondolas take about a year to build and cost seventy to eighty thousand dollars. There are around 400 in Venice today, and most Venetians can go their whole life without setting foot in one outside of occasionally on their wedding day. Wrapping up our last full day in Venice, we paid a visit to the ever-busy Rialto Bridge, just north of St. Mark's Basilica. The bridge has been rebuilt several times, but the latest iteration was completed in 1591 and is the oldest of the four bridges spanning the Grand Canal in Venice. There's plenty of high-priced shopping around Rialto, as well as a great fish market if you are in the mood for something as fresh as it gets from the sea. Buongiorno, good morning. We're uh, making our way to the train station right now. Um, got my Rick Steves shirt on. Keep on traveling, shout out Rick Steves. Um, just wanna add a little thought here. Uh, it's not even that early, it's uh, 10 a.m. on Saturday and um, you can see how quiet some of these piazzas are. I definitely recommend going out on a walk. Um, like I said, it doesn't even have to be that early. 10 a.m. should suffice, it looks like. Um, but probably even earlier in these streets would be even quieter. It's just remarkable how few people are here in Venice uh, right now. And um, just nice to get out in the morning and enjoy a little piece of it for yourself. What do you think? I like walking, so it's perfect for me. Heck yeah. Hey dude, we're getting our steps in. Almost 20, 25,000 a day to start the trip and now we're down to about half of that, about around 15, but still pretty good. Lots of actual physical steps to go up on all these bridges. I think we've crossed, how many bridges do you think we've crossed on our way to the train station here? Carrying your all your bags in my bag. Uh, at least 10, I would say. At least 10, yeah. yeah. Alright, we stood outside the supermarket where we're going to grab our bread and our meat and our cheese for our train ride. And um, mom, have you ever seen such a beautiful front of a uh, grocery store? We have the store here, and the canal, out here. Molte bene. Molte bene. Very good, mom. Yeah, quite the storefront. You can just drive your boat up and grab your groceries, load them up, head on home down the canal. Pretty cool. All right, mom, prosciutto, uh, ham, salami, a little bit of chicken, baguettes. What do you think? Good haul? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Molte bene. Molte bene. All right, <laughs> off to the train station. Time to eat. Okay. Arriba Dutch. Arriba Dutch. Getting to travel by train in Europe with my mom was one of the highlights of the trip for me. There's really nothing like packing a lunch and zipping through the countryside at 185 miles an hour. A quick four hours later, we were back in Rome. After returning to Rome for our flight home the next day, there was really only one more thing to do. Mom and I grabbed tickets to the Lazio vs Inter Milan Serie A match and were treated to a 3-1 Lazio victory. Oh, 
I want to close this video with a big thank you to my travel partner on this trip, my mom. Along with the trip I took in 2016 to Cuba with my dad, this experience really was as special as it gets, and I'm so grateful to have been able to do this with her. She is truly a trooper as we walked 72 miles over 8 days. Thank you, Ma. Can't wait for the next one.